Wait, remember Tack and the Power of Juju? It was an American-made CGI TV series based on the 2003 THQ video game of the same name. Yes, the video game came first and the TV series spawned second. A rare move that I respect. Now make chameleon twisting croc TV shows, cowards. Tack and the Power of Juju is noteworthy as the first CGI series directly overseen by Nickelodeon Studios. The TV series follows Tack, a young shaman in training tasked with the responsibility of protecting his village. And all of the poo poo nunu people in side of it from threats magical and fierce. Speaking of magic, welcome back or hello for the first time to the 25 Days of Fringemas, where I cover something interesting, nostalgic, or holiday related every day from the 1st of December to the 25th, in order to find that holiday spirit I lost nearly a decade ago. So if you want to be part of this daily journey and help me find that good old jolly joy, subscribe and come aboard. So let's dive into this pretty heavily requested look into Tack in the Power of Juju. Tack is our main character and protagonist of the series. He's a teenager bestowed with the magical ability to call upon the powers of the Jujus, a race of magical creatures that reside in a different realm. The source of Tack's connection to the Jujus is strongly implied to be his mother, the Juju Aurora who created the magical crystal that powers Tack's staff. Tack's fun-loving and mischievous nature often leads to him misusing his magic abilities, resulting in the exact problems he's supposed to be preventing. That's such a main character thing to do. Tack lives with his uncle and Juju teacher shaman Jabulba. Little is known about what happened to Tack's human father, but despite this, Jabulba does his best to train his nephew in the ways of the Juju, while being a good shaman for the rest of the Pupununu tribe. That's debatable. Jabulba's connection with the realm of Juju, besides his magical abilities, has given him an increased lifespan, and I'll say, he's looking good for the age. What's your workout routine, man? Joining Tack on his goof-offs is Jira, Tack's fun-loving best friend and the village chief's youngest daughter. Jira is nice, funny, and is implied that she might have romantic feelings for Tack. I mean, Tack has his own video game franchise and now a TV show. Maybe a movie deal would be next. No, just a video game remake slash reboot? Well, hey, well, that's a start. Jira and Tack's best friend is Kiko, a similarly aged Pupununu villager with no parents who lives in a nearby cave. While being a more comedic relief type of character, he creates several inventions throughout the series, though only a few of them ever manage to truly work. Jira's father, the village chief, is a subpar but overall harmless leader of the village who switches between being mad at Tack for misusing his juju powers and causing issues for everyone and begging Tack to use his magic to fix whatever problem has popped up. This is the type of energy that puts a person in therapy. Living in the village with Tack is also Locke, the resident warrior who's more talk than action, letting his cowardice get in the way of ever actually doing anything, and then talking up what few accomplishments he actually does have. He serves as another comic relief character for the show and is voiced by one of the most reoccurring voices you'll hear in the animation space, Patrick Warburton. Hey, Dak, is that the power of Juju? <laughs> You know what? Yeah, all right. The Juju power is mostly working. Tag is coming up next, only on Nicktoons Network. The source of Tack's magical abilities both in the show and the games are the Jujus. These magical creatures Tack can call upon when he needs help. Each Juju has their own unique thing they represent. While these Juju are by and large helpful, occasionally they cause problems for Tack and the Pupununu people by messing around in the human realm. Throughout the series, we see Jujus like Belly Juju, a hungry Juju whose stomach has taken over his mouth, Big Boss Juju, a fire and rock looking monster who is the mightiest Juju in the realm, Bug Juju, a small Juju Juju who has command over bugs. That one was just straightforward and to the point, and also voiced by Wayne Knight. There's Judge Juju. No, that's Judge Judy. Judge Juju is dressed as a judge, and then there's Judge's pet, Bildrafish. No, that's not a Bella Porch song. That's the name of the monster with three heads and a dragon-like body. So that's neat. But there are tons of Jujus overall. This isn't a ranking video of all the individual Jujus, so we'll just move on from this point. Unlike the video games, there is no main antagonist in Tack and the Power of Juju show. Instead, different threats rotate throughout the the series with these threats being sometimes magical, sometimes human, which is kind of a weird and different break from the norm when it comes to shows like this, so I appreciate it for always trying to do things a bit differently. The show first aired on August 31st, 2007 and ran until January 24th, 2009, culminating in 26 episodes. Yeah, a year and a half to produce 26 episodes is pretty spread thin, so it's no wonder that the show only lasted for a single season. Reruns of the series aired on Nicktoons until September 3rd, 2012, and it was cancelled over 
overall due to low ratings. But how do you expect ratings, viewership, and support for a series to happen if you take a year and a half to produce one season? To be fair, it really ended in November of 2008 with a final part that released in January, but regardless, there is a dedicated fan base of the games and extension, the show. But there is reasons for the low ratings. A lot of people just didn't like the show, claiming it to be one of, if not the worst show at the time in Nickelodeon's history. Not a very nice title to have, but that's the ship it ultimately sank on. Tack and the Power of Juju was a co-production between THQ and Nickelodeon, with the project overseen by Nick Jennings, an American director, artist, and producer who, during his career in animation, has worked on such shows as SpongeBob SquarePants and Adventure Time, and apparently Tack and the Power of Juju. THQ was a California-based video game company founded in 1990 by Jack Friedman. During its operation, THQ made several games alongside Tack and the Power of Juju, including Darksiders, Destroy All Humans, MX vs. ATV, and Saints Row. THQ had several long-term licensing agreements with sports and entertainment companies during its operation, including Disney and DreamWorks. So by the time they entered into an agreement with Nickelodeon to produce a TV series spin-off of Tack and the Power of Juju, THQ had quite a bit of experience with entertainment networks. THQ has been defunct since 2013, having declared bankruptcy that year. But there is a silver lining we will get to soon. In the Tack and the Power of Juju video game, a bitter Pupununu shaman named Treylock weakens the moon Juju, the kind protector of the Pupununu people, so he can turn the Pupununu into sheep as revenge for being passed over as the next high shaman for Jabulba. Locke is turned into a sheep, so it's up to Tack to gather magical plants to change Locke back, uh, which works, but the pair discover that the sheep wasn't Locke after all. And then a bunch more stuff happens. Listen, the games, I think, are held in more fondness than the show is, clearly. There's Tack and the Power of Juju, Tack 2, the Staff of Dreams, Tack and the Guardians of Gross, Tack the Great Juju Challenge, Tack Mojo Mistake on the Nintendo DS, and Tack Moonstone Madness on PC. Tack would also be featured in some of the Nicktoons games as a playable character and had levels of the Pupununu Village and then the burial grounds within Nicktoons Baseball. Don't go away. Tack is up next, and the Juju just keeps getting stronger. Tack and the Power of Juju, next, here on Nicktoons. While the show is inspired by the video game, there is questionable connectivity between the game series and the TV series, with it best to treat the works as two separate things. One main example for this continuity issue is the main antagonist in the games versus the series. In the game, the main antagonist is a rejected village shaman, Treylock. In the series, Treylock is reworked in the show for a much tinier role, being an antagonist in only a few episodes versus the central villain of the story. Some of the smaller aesthetic differences between the two works include things like Tack's design. In the show, it mirrors more of an appearance of Tack 2, more so than how he looked in the original game, and Patrick Warburton being the only cast member to reprise his voice role as Locke from the video game to the show. Though Tack and the Power of Juju had a built-in fan base from the games, it struggled to gain an audience and was eventually cancelled. It also has this certain stiffness to the 3D animation that made it feel sluggish, a bit incomplete overall, a tad uninteresting to look at if you will. As for the video game side of things, the main two Tack video games I personally played and enjoyed them. Although, for some reason, I do have this McDonald's toy of dead juju, so what's that really say about me? With all the magic in the show, you'd think there would be some magical spark that clicks for the show. But like I said, it feels incomplete. There's flat textures, and again, that stiff animation, it just never really gave me a purpose to watch the next episode. As a background noise, sure, it gets the job done, but for an investment, there's plenty of other one-season shows that may deserve your attention more. But hey, if you personally enjoy it, then that's all that matters. Now, in recent years, THQ Nordic, which was basically the resurrection of the THQ name after the bankruptcy thanks to Embracer Group acquiring the trademark for the name THQ, and renaming one of their subsidiaries, Nordic Games, to THQ Nordic. They constantly, over the past few years, have been heavily invested in the back catalog of properties from THQ, and have been making plenty more deals that have led them to work on bringing back games like SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. The reason I bring this up, like I mentioned way earlier at the beginning of this video, is that one of the games that they had announced that they are looking into and possibly already working on is a remake and possible reboot of the Tack video games. So who knows, maybe the Tack and the Power of Juju show comes back too. Probably not, but you know, never say never I guess. Let me know how you feel about Tack and the Power of Juju. Did you like the games and not the show like myself, or were you the opposite? Or did you like or not like either of them? Tell me in the comments below. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, or else.
I'll see you tomorrow with another video for my next day of Fringe Miss. Check out the playlist to keep up with this month. But until then, later.